Hi Libra, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your January 2022 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into the safe and loving space. So let's see what the tarot has to say. How will Libra be affected by the January 2022 full moon? Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the Hierophant, which is Taurus energy coming through at our root, and we have the world. So if we have Taurus energy within our natal chart, this is going to come through very powerfully as a root form of our personality. Then we have the Hermit, which is Virgo energy. If we're born on the cusp with Virgo, or if we have Virgo energy within our natal chart, that comes through very powerfully as part of our inner self. We then have the Seven of Cups. We have at our heart, which has come through quite powerfully, the Page of Cups, the Page of Wands, the Six of Wands, and the Ten of Pentacles. We're going to be a student of our heart during this time, especially since the Page of Cups has come forward. Cups represent the heart, and so we are a student here of our heart, of what our heart desires, of what we're desiring. We're also a student of our passion, and we're going to see how we get to take the the information, the gifts, the, the greater understanding that is given to us. For some of us, we're going to have a hard time opening up that envelope, opening up to what we truly want or to what our passion is or to how to embrace our heart and what we deeply desire within our lives. But there is a sense of celebration of the self and of who we are really starts to lead us towards prosperity, success, and bounty, which all sounds super easy to do, but is rather complex, rather intense. It moves us to the Hierophant once again, Hierophant coming through at our root, now amplified in our public arena. This is a sense of the keys are ours. We get to open up the doors to how we perceive heaven, nirvana, bliss, bounty to be within our lives. Is it going to be complicated? Of course it is. Is it going to be worth it? Absolutely. And then we have the two of wands. And there is a sense of new roads opening to us, new passions guiding us. Let's look at the energy we need to be mindful of during this time. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. This is 
the king of pentacles which is very interesting because taurus energy is also represented by the pentacles in the minor arcana so we have to be very not worried but very mindful of letting material wealth material gain out rank out out you know hold validity and purpose over anything else and so this is going to be telling us that yes everything is interconnected but it might not be connected in the way that we are originally seeing it in the way that we originally thought in what we originally desired and so this is going to be a time for us where we kind of have to step back and we're also going to be very drawn to people who have a very strict very regimented very structured way of embracing wisdom because that's going to be something that's very important to us embracing success which is something very important to us not only on this for on this full moon on the 17th of January but for the two weeks after it we're going to be looking at things and saying how do I get to the success get to the bounty get to the abundance that I want and we're at times going to be living somebody else's story and thinking this is how I have to do it right this is how success is well that's success for you know John Smith you know that's success for Joe Schmo over there it's not success for me and I have to make it so that my inner voice my inner prosperity speaks to the world around me and that's something that you know we spent a whole lifetime figuring out but yet as we start to see it as we start to understand it we start to see understand and really embrace ourselves it moves us to our chakra energy Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Abundance. And that's it. The abundance of the soul, the abundance of ourselves, the abundance of our root chakra is moving us to a place of success, to a place of bounty, and to a place of riches. Rich is, but yet, it might not be the wealth, the bounty, and the riches that we had originally thought it would be. Let us look now at things astrologically. So on the 17th of January, we have the full moon in Cancer, and this is the wolf moon. So this means that this is amplifying something that we are hungering for, that we are craving during this time. And this lasts, again, for two weeks after the full moon. The full moon's effect lasts for two weeks after. So with the full moon, our family, our home, our relationships come into focus. We will see that the opposite forces in our lives also come into fo focus during this time, come into our consciousness, into our way of thinking, into our way of being. We may be looking at our work home life balance. We may be looking at our wants and our needs and everybody else's wants and our wants, everybody else's needs and our needs. Something is going to be pushing us forward during this full moon in a direction that we hadn't thought we were going to go and in a direction that makes us claim who we intrinsically are more and more. That's coming through very powerfully in the cards. This is a time when we seek balance and we need to listen to that inner voice. We're going to be guided. And again, it's not only for the 17th of January, but it's for the two weeks following. Spirit is going to be talking to us. Listen. And that's a very easy thing to say. It can be a very hard thing to do, especially if we want everything to be neatly kind of wrapped up in in something tangible, in something, I want to say quantifiable. You know, spirit is saying here, the heart isn't always something that you can measure. Spirit isn't always something that you can see. And sometimes for the very lucky of us, if we're on this journey, we get glimpses of it every now and then. The full moon is going to be opposite Pluto. Now, this is important because if we have strong Scorpio energy within our natal chart or we're born on the cusp with Scorpio, this is going to be very impactful to us because Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. This aspect will see our emotions intensify. We will be feeling more vulnerable because of mood swings, because of fears, because of jealousies, and just simply because we're more emotionally plugged into our world and to ourselves. Some of us will find this to be absolutely exhausting. We will think, you know, how am I supposed to handle everything? How am I supposed to fix everything? We can be emotionally manipulated quite easily during this time because we're putting too much of our hearts into something, which sounds not like the right thing to say because we're going to think, well, the more of my heart I put in, the more, you know, beauty I get out. And that's not always going to be the case. We have to see where our emotions, you know, guide us and lead us. We also need to listen to our hearts because our hearts are going to be saying, oh, no, not this again. No, oh, no, I can't do this. And we might be thinking, oh, shut up, you know, just keep do going, just keep doing as we tend to do to our emotions in our world, especially in our Western world. Well, actually in the world in general, not just in our Western world. For those of us working on empathic and psychic development, this is the time to really embrace what we want for not only the 17th, but again, for the two weeks after, we're going to find that we become 
that we become more grounded if we look at ourselves, if we look at our empathy, if we look at our intuition. But we need to ground ourselves. We don't always become more grounded because of this. It can become over overwhelming and it can it can break the tether that we have to our earth star chakra located six inches below our feet, what grounds us to this earth. It can become overwhelming for us. And so this is a time where we need to honor our grounding. We need to do something, a meditation, I love looking at a candle flame. You know, here, this is a candle for protection and cleansing. I love just looking at the flame, taking in its beauty and taking in the way, you know, the, the flame dances. And that becomes a calming, soothing, almost like a mantra within our heads and see how spirit speaks to us during this time. See where the mind takes us. If it takes us to chaos, if it takes us to, you know, overwhelming emotions, then to step back and to say, okay, no, not that. You know, all right, I understand I'm stressed. I'm acknowledging that stress, but I also need to acknowledge me more and more. So this, as we are grounded, as we don't become too emotionally invested into things, we start to see our power becoming. Now, the moon is also conjunct the fixed star Pokairon. Pokairon has a Mercury mars nature to it and this makes us stubborn this makes us judgy this makes us hasty and these aren't good aspects always to have yes you know sometimes you need to be stubborn it's a character a character you know trait that can be good and it's one that can be bad judgy not so good but also we need to be able to judge situations that's also we are represented by justice in the major arcana so judging things looking at things weighing things seeing the consequence and the 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 bounty to it is very important to us and not being hasty is also going to be very important to us during this time. Now, this star can make us think that through force, through violence, we'll be able to get what we want. And that is something that we have to be very mindful of because the violence doesn't mean that we have to go out and attack people, which we should never do, most definitely. But it can also be just a vengefulness, a spitefulness, a, a character attack or a, a emotional attack that comes forward. And because we're so sensitive during this time, it becomes intense. Everything can become more amplified, but it also means what you get back from the universe is going to be much more amplified. So be very mindful of this. The Hierophant is representative of the Pope in the Rider Waite Smith deck, you know, and we see the Pope hat here in this deck. And what we're going to find is that what our traditions are, what is quintessentially right for our soul, is going to be something we're being drawn back to. So this could be Orthodox religions, this could be spiritual spirituality, this could be, you know, new age understandings, this could be a sense of oneness with nature, it could be a myriad of things. But we're going to find that we're finding ourselves again. The keys are starting to come to us and we're starting to unlock the door. We're starting to realize that we hold so many more answers than we thought we did. Now we can lose this most definitely. Everybody does. Some days we wake up, we have the answer. Some days we wake up, we have chaos and doubt and fear and we just feel overwhelmed. But this is saying, what is truth? What is power? What is insight? What is awareness for us? And how does it open up the doors for us? And it moves us to the world. It moves us to the world coming forward. It moves us to beauty. It moves us to claiming our world, claiming what we desire. It also moves us to the realm of fairy tales, which we might think, oh, well, that's silly. No, it's not. You know, stories are what we are. We only have our stories, our perceptions of reality, the seeking to be present in the moment and yet letting it fly by as we look at the past, as we look at the future, and yet we're never in the now. The world is opening to us and saying, where do you want to stand? What is important to you? What is it that you desire? What are you fighting against? And what do we have to accept at times? And it's not saying to accept abuse or to accept anger or to accept, you know, fear or manipulation. It's saying, what is it that when I look at myself and maybe I've moved to a place that I don't really like and I have to come to terms with the fact that the world has changed or I have changed or things around me aren't necessarily in my control the way that I want them to be. And so here, as we're looking at the world that is part of us. We're looking at our part in the world and we're looking at the story that we are telling. And we're going to start to really look at that narrative and say, is this a movie I would want to watch? Is this a book I would want to read? And we're not looking for something over the top, but we need something very grounding, very beautiful, very present for us to be able to embrace. And it moves us to the, her the hermit. Now the hermit, I love this because it's the dragon guarding the gold. And I always found that so perplexing. You know, I studied medieval history in, in college and you would read these stories time and time again of the dragon 
guard, guarding the, the wealth, guarding the gold, you know, taking away gold, taking away maidens, you know, all these things that you would think of. And you would say, well, why would a dragon need that? Why would a giant lizard need this? They wouldn't. It is an allegory for all the things that we as human beings hold dear and all the things that we are letting be ripped away from us because of fear, because of the Pokemon, you know, in, in the darkness, because of the scariest thing that our minds can come up with. And it is a lizard that flies, you know, a flying snake. So here, there is just such a power in understanding what we are afraid of, how we are afraid, and what it is that we are hoarding away from ourselves, that we are letting the monsters within our own minds hoard away from, from us. And yet we desperately need to embrace them. We desperately need to say, this is my gift. This is my power. This is my brilliance. And it doesn't have to be anything big. You know, we tend to think in these grandiose scales. And yet it can be as beautiful as I love baking cookies with, with my kids. And why not, you know, have a little bake sale, you know, when the weather gets warmer, if you're in a cold climate, or bake cookies for your neighbors and, and give them out. And just a way to say, you know, I'm thinking of you. I care. You know, I'm here type of thing about connecting, about community again. And it moves us to the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is our dreams. Our Seven of Cups is what we desire. So what are we hoarding from us that keeps us from our dreams, that keeps us from what we want within our world, that keeps us from looking at why we're here? And we lock away our dreams. A lot of times we lock away our dreams and we say, when it becomes easier, I'll look at this. When life calms down, I will obtain this. When I X, Y, Z, I can have it. And what Spirit is saying here is, why can't we let it into the light now? And it can be because we're afraid, we're overwhelmed, we're thinking, oh no, this couldn't possibly be. And if I bring my dreams into the light of day, then they get ruined. They just fall apart. The world will eat them alive. But what if the world doesn't? And what if, like the Ouroboros, they get eaten and yet they still exist? One part of that dream might have to transform and change, but it's like the face of the moon. We are always transforming and changing and guiding and understanding. And it brings us to the page of cups. It brings us to being a student of what it is that we deeply desire, where it is that we deeply want to be. We're going to find inspiration in the most unlikely of places, and we're going to discard it before we accept it. We're going to send it into the chaos and say, this isn't for me, before we say, oh no, but this is exactly what I need. And so if we're looking at things and saying, well, why aren't I there yet? We might not, we might not be meant to be there right now. There's a discovery, there's an insight, there's a passion that comes. And we need to follow that thread. It's going to be a very fine thread that we need to look at, that we need to understand. And it brings us to being a student of our fire, of what we desire. We're going to be getting messages from spirit. We're going to be getting scrolls. It's like something is going to be written down. There's blueprints here. We're not always going to see it. Some of us are going to have a very hard time unraveling the blueprints. Others of us are going to be getting these messages and we could be ignoring them. We could be following them at times and losing them. And others of us could be following them and doing a pretty good job. But it doesn't matter. Excuse me. It doesn't matter where we are on this journey. What matters is that we're starting to see ourselves. We're starting to learn. We're starting to understand. We're starting to break down barriers. We're starting to ask questions. We're starting to discover. And that brings us to a place of celebration that brings us to a place of learning how to embrace what we want from life, where we desire to be, what it is that we desire, who it is that we are. And as we are celebrating, we are starting to see wealth come into our lives. It's also because we're learning and our hearts are saying, I'm completing a cycle when it comes to wealth. I have learned a lesson. I have understand, you know, the principles. I am guiding myself forward. I'm seeing myself more. This can also be during this moon, we're starting to learn maybe one thing at a time. Instead of saying, oh, well, I'm going to start this new project and I'm going to start that new project. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. What if we do one thing and we do it really well? This is something I find very hard to do. You know, I always keep on piling more on my plate, on my plate. And my mom will say to me, you know, Dane, stop. One thing done well is better than 18 million things half-assed, excuse my language, but, you know, not done well at all. So this is going to be something that's very important for us to say this is what I'm moving forward in. This is what I'm sharing my bounty in. This is what I'm sharing my beauty in. This is who I am. This is where the wealth, now either it's financial or something we value as much as money, is coming forward. Remember, this year, this full moon, is the first full moon of 2022. The angel number year of new beginnings, of new passions, of new understandings, of finding ourselves, of seeing ourselves, of discovery. It brings us to the Hierophant. It brings us to the place here where it says ritual, ceremony, tradition, structure, knowledge, wisdom, teacher. 
where we start to see the teachings of our lives come forward. It's not that we have to follow a certain teacher. It's not that life has to be structured around rituals, around ideas, if we're not comfortable with this. It means that we start to find a place, a home within our souls, within ourselves that lead us forward, that guide us in a direction that we might never have thought we could walk in, that we might never have thought we could be a part of. We start to see our world open and we start to follow it. And it brings us to the Two of Wands, which says here, plans, partnership, and influence. How are our plans influencing us? Have we said by this age, I have to be this? Are we releasing that? Are we saying, you know what, in divine time, I am guided? Are we looking at things and saying in relationships, you know, there has to be either a giver or a take, or my relationship is leading me this way and I want to go this way? How am I balancing the way that I'm starting to see myself move forward in the world with the expectations that other people have for me? And then our last is influences. What is influencing us? Is it influencers online? Is it, you know, social media? Is it, you know, other people's ideas? That's going to be something we have to be very mindful of. We cannot let everybody else influence our path forward. It will be so easy and it will be so detrimental to who we are and where it is that we want to be. It brings us to our lunar message. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. So at our root, we have a fiery conflict approaches, acceptance, acceptance of the fiery change, the passion, the influence, the desires that are coming forward in our lives. And a fiery climax approaches, you know, this is the full moon in Aries. This is a sense of, you know, that warrior spirit approaches. How do I accept what I'm fighting for? How do I accept what I need, what I want within my life? And there's a really distinct urge here from, from the cards. Do not engage in violence. Do not engage in a promotion of hate or despair or despondency. It's like, how do I approach this fiery climax, this thing that's going to, you know, invoke my emotions and accept my power, accept my presence within this world, accept what it is that I desire, not how it is I'm being manipulated by even the planetary alignment. It moves us to our subconscious, not our subconscious, our lunar inner self. And it says balance spiritual and practical growth. And as we start to balance the spiritual and the practical, as we're embracing the full moon in Pisces, we're starting to see growth within us. And of course, the card is the full moon in Pisces. You know, we're starting to see growth within us. We're starting to see ourselves evolving. It brings us to our subconscious, not our subconscious, our lunar, which is coming through, I guess, why I keep saying subconscious. It's spirit's like it's coming through sub through subconscious messages. This isn't going to be kind of like a whack over the head like it is going to be for some people when the moon speaks to us. You know, Libra, when the quiet, when the silence, when the instinct, when the spotlight comes on things, it's going to be a subconscious drawer. It's going to be something where I feel pulled this way or I feel guided this way and I don't know why. That That is it. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And it says meditate and contemplate. Here, the new moon is in Pisces in this card. And so this is the new moon in Pisces and it says meditate and contemplate. And then it says protection. We are protected by the element of Pisces, by this sense of facing our fears, looking at the moon, embracing what we desire and seeing ourselves. It's not going to be through the external. It's not going to be, yeah, that's why the subconscious is coming forward so strongly. It's not going to be through this sense of if you do this, then this will happen. You know, you will have this power. You will have this authority. It's through the quiet within me. I will see doors start to open because I'm starting to follow them myself. I'm starting to see them myself. It brings us to our lunar public arena self. And it says work through your fears, beauty. Because as we work through our fears, that's where the beauty is. That's where the beauty of ourselves and what we desire is. And this work through our fears is represented by the new moon in Scorpio. And so that Scorpio energy, that Pluto energy comes forward very powerfully and we will feel it. Okay, we will feel that influence until the new moon on the 1st of February. 
Now let's look at our subconscious lunar message, which is the new moon in Aquarius, which says bring love into the situation, which is just going to be so appropriate for us. And then it says surrender. Surrender to what we love. Surrender to what we desire. Again, we have this idea that it has to be a big life, that it has to be something so extraordinary, right? Our lives have to be something so extraordinary. What if they're smaller lives? You know, what if we are teachers and we're that teacher that changes the way the kid thinks about themselves? What if we are parents and we change the way, you know, our child thinks about themselves or we raise good children? You know, we take the bullies out of the situation and we, we start to raise really good children. We say, no, you have confidence, you have brilliance, there's, there's power to you. What if we rescue an animal, you know, and we give them a home and love and change their lives forever? What if we stop looking at the small things and saying that's insignificant and looking at the small things and says, that's what makes up our world. That's what makes up love. That's what makes up connection. That's what brings me what I desire. It brings us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of and it's the queen of fire the queen of fire it's so interesting we have the king of pentacles which is our earthly connection right and the queen of fire which is again our earthly connection and what it is saying here is like don't let passions override our emotions our desires what we want meaning do not let the fire the i will conquer the this has to be done right now become the guiding force within us that eats away the calmness, the wisdom, the, the ethereal nature of the air that guides us. Because we are ruled by air signs. We need to be able to be malleable. And air puts out fire. If we really embrace our minds and we embrace the questioning and the, the greater insight, we will put out the flame. <laughs> we will make the flame flicker, right? But if we, don't, if we don't look at the questions, we will feed the flame and feed the flame because we're just running all over the place. And we need a bit of passion, but we need the passion to warm the soul. We do not need the passion to engulf us. It's going to be very important. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy, and that is universal light. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. There is light, that there is instinct that is guiding us, that is opening up the door, that is moving us forward. It moves us to our subconscious rooted energy, and that is the empress. The empress is the prosperity, is the bounty, is the opening up of what I greatly desire, of what I greatly need, and what I'm giving birth to into this world. It's what am I creating for my soul, for myself, and for what I desire from my life. It moves us to our subconscious inner self, and that is the Page of Cups. Again, we are a student of our love. We're a student of our connection. We're looking at love. We're looking at peace. We're looking at harmony. We're going to find ways to move forward that seem absurd to us at one point or another in our lives and we're going to start to say well why not give it a try why not see where it takes us it brings us to our subconscious emotional self and that is the magician as above so below as we think it so it becomes and that thought process that instinct that understanding that's going to open to us what we deeply want we're standing before the altar of our existence and we're saying i claim I claim who I am. I claim what I desire for my life. I claim what I need for me. And as we do this, we start to see the magic of the human touch. The magic of the human touch is the imperfection of life and being. It's saying it doesn't have to be perfect. If we wanted it to be perfect, we could have it computer you know, generated. It's kind of like music. A computer can compose music, but when a human plays music, and when a computer can play music and auto-tune it, it can make it perfect. And it doesn't sound right. It doesn't pull you in the same way that music does played by a person who feels it, who falls in love with it, and who makes mistakes along the way. Just certain ones holds a note maybe for just a little bit too long, a little bit too short here or there. No matter how hard you practice, there's going to be something human about it. That's the imperfection that brings perfection to the human ears that brings perfection to the human eyes. If we're completely symmetrical as human beings, it becomes freaky. But if we are almost symmetrical, it becomes greatly desirable. So just, just remember that. We tend to, to focus only on perfection, and that's just an, an intense place to be. It moves us to our subconscious public arena self, and that is the fool. Here it says purity, potential, pu yeah, purity, potential, risk, innocence, and desire. We have to have the purity. 
to go on this journey, this purity of instinct of, and desire and a sense of, I'm going to take this journey. I'm going to open up this door. I'm going to go after what it is that I need, what it is that I want, where it is that I need to be. And that becomes a game changer. We are changing the game during this time. The fool is also, we have to take that risk of people thinking that we're foolish, people thinking and not understanding us. That's going to be okay. Not everybody has to see us the way that we see ourselves or has to take us seriously. Some people will laugh. And I just think of in the Bible when Sarah laughs, you know, not to get all religious on us, but when Sarah laughed, she pushed back her dreams. And so if others laugh, that's fine. But if we laugh at ourselves, are we pushing back our dreams to the point and to, till the time where we do not laugh at what seems extraordinary? If we take the extraordinary and make it part of our ordinary ex existence, if we let it become the extraordinary of who we are and how we embrace humanity and how we embrace being human for ourselves. All right. All right, Libra. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this moon. Take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. blessed moon.